Now, levels of at abstraction like a system can be abstra uh, can be viewed at different levels as we have already seen that we can see it at gate level, we can see it at transistor level or it may be even at a much higher level at a, at a functional level we can see. So, as we go higher and higher levels of implementation, so uh, we have got uh, lesser detail about the internal implementation. So, um, the, so Im implementation details are not available. So, as a result for test generation, so it will be more at the input output uh, situation input output points only. So, it will not go into the details of the implementations. So, fault models based on gate and physical level. So, you when we are considering the gate level, so we have got some fault models. So, when you go to physical level in terms of transistors and wires, we have got a more detailed view of the system. So, as a result, uh, the types of faults that can be detected by a lower level fault model. So, that cannot be that may not be possible with a higher level fault model. But of course, if uh, when we are going for this lower level fault model, the number of uh, um, faults and uh, number that uh, that are possible becomes uh, uh, huge. So as a result, it may be difficult to uh, generate test patterns for all those faults. So that way, higher level model can help us in uh, detect in generating test patterns which are much more compact in nature. So as a typical example, so we consider two circuits here. So both of them are uh, uh, corresponding to say this particular um, uh, Boolean function. So A B bar C bar plus A B C plus uh, A B C. Uh, so this is sorry, this is A B bar C bar plus A bar B C. This uh, bar should move here. A bar B C plus X A B C. So this is this term is don't care. So now naturally I can have uh, different type of uh, grouping. So in one realization it may be like this A B C plus A bar B C bar. In another case, I can have this realization. So, A B plus uh, B C bar. So, that is that is also possible. Now, you see that when you are uh, looking into this circuit, so these are the this is the uh, circuit implementation, and for circuit B, this is the circuit implementation. Now, if we uh, use a test vector generation uh, for this circuit. Okay, so, these are the test vectors that can uh, detect uh, different faults on, the op on, on all these lines in the circuit. Whereas, this, uh, uh, this uh, type of uh, test vectors, it will not be able to detect these faults. So, so the, the faults that are marked, so this line stuck at 1 or this line stuck at 1 or this line stuck at 1. So, this type, these faults cannot be detected by test vectors that I have uh, generated considering the second implementation of the circuit. So, if we have so, imp uh, so implementation dependent test generation, so that is uh, important. So, we have to have the proper implementation uh, details for generating the tests properly. Now, how do we test a system? Okay. So, what are the components that are needed when we are trying to test a uh, chip or a system? So, one very important part in this testing process is the automatic test equipment or ATE. So, we will be this will be coming to us again and again. So, this is some sort of computer. So, that will store the test patterns and responses in it and there will be some um, uh, facility by which these test patterns can be applied uh, to the circuit under test through the channels of the ATE and the responses will be collected and then you can uh, collect, you can compare those responses with the fault free responses stored in the computer's memory. So, this, uh, it, uh, this ATE it will consist of a computer for central control and flexible test and measurement for different products. So, type depending upon the type of tests that can be done with this ATE, we should have facility for applying those uh, patterns or uh, measure the uh, values or if it is uh, allowing you to do analog testing, so IDDQ testing, so you have to uh, you have to be able to measure the current and all that. Second thing is the pin electronics and fixtures, so how do you apply test patterns to the pins and sample responses. As we know that these chips that we are testing, they can have a different number of pins in them. Similarly, this ATE that I have, so the ATE also will have a number of uh, channels Okay. So, this uh, so uh, ATE channel width is also uh, has to be some fixed value. Now, the problem is that suppose we have an ATE which can have uh, which, which has got a channel width of say 40 bits. Now, I have a chip that has got say um, uh, 100 uh, pins in it. Now, how do I test this 100 pin chip 
with a 40 p 40 uh, um, uh, an 80 with the channel width of 40 bits. So, naturally we have to do some sort of multiplexing. So, how can we do all these things? So, that is actually uh, that is actually a part of the ATE. So, ATE can, can can tell like okay you can you can apply test patterns in this fashion by doing the multiplexing. So, this is this is spin electronics and fixture. So, this will be talking about what are the ATE channels we have and how to use them for applying test patterns. And the third thing is the test program. So, that will control the timing of test pattern compare responses to known good responses. So, these are when the test patterns are to be applied in what sequence and uh, what is and it will collect the response at what time it should be collected and then the comparison part. So, these are actually part of ATE and since uh, the circuit complexities are going up. So, this ATE will uh, have uh, ATE will need to have large amount of memory to hold the test patterns and the responses. So, that way the cost of the ATU is also becoming enormous. So, uh, if it is uh, if we it depends on two factors the, the, the channels the channel width and also the memory capacity that it has. So, there are challenges like the uh, as IC technology is increasing significantly. So, com chips are becoming more and more complex, but ATE uh, that is a one that, that is some uh, most of the uh, company of the um, fabrication house or the test testing company they will be having one ATE or say uh, uh, of some certain capacity. So, it is not advisable that with every new chip that we design. So, we have to have an ATE that can run at a higher speed. So, every new version of chip running at higher speed uh, the ATE speed should also go up. So, there must be some technique by which we can uh, use this older ATEs for the uh, faster chips as well. So, that is also a part of this ATE design. So, ATE stores the test patterns. Now, where, where from do we get those test patterns? Okay. So, they are actually coming from uh, some automatic test pattern generation technique called ATPG. So, so, there are uh, there are very nice algorithms by which we can generate test vectors for a given circuit on specific fault model. So, we say that okay, so this circuit has got say 10 uh, points at which there may be faults. So, each of those is if we are considering say stuck at fault, then for every point we need to generate the test patterns. So, there, ma there are certain algorithms by which we can do this test pattern generation. So, they are known as automatic test pattern generation algorithms. Second important uh, another piece of software. So, ATPG is a piece of software which is uh, generating the test patterns. Another important piece of software that are needed by testing community is the fault simulation techniques. So, so what happens is that uh, I am given I am given a set of test patterns. Now, how do I know how, how many of the faults are actually covered by this test pattern set. So, for that purpose I need to inject those faults into the circuit apply the test pattern set and see whether it is detecting the faults or not. Now, naturally uh, we, we cannot do this before the circuit comes into existence. So, and uh, particularly the physically that fault has occurred in the circuit. So, uh, so but that will uh, that way we cannot wait for the faults to occur. So, what is done in software itself. So, we can have a piece of simulator which will be injecting those faults into the uh, circuit description and it will try to uh, see like what is simulate the circuit in the presence of those faults by applying the test vectors and see whether it is uh, giving us the uh, um, uh, some response which is different from the fault free responses. So, if it is so then we can say that okay, this test pattern is detecting the has the capability to detect the fault. So, this fault simulation technique. So, they emulate fault models in the in the circuit and applies test vectors and uh, so and determine the fault coverage. So, naturally the question is the simulation type uh, time. So, how much time it needs to do the simulation. So, if I have got say 100 test patterns and say 100 faults and if I am simulating each uh, 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 the system for each fault and each um, test pattern that means the entire circuit has to be simulated 100 into 100 times. So, that is a huge number. So, can we reduce this uh, uh, time? Okay. So, there are uh, when you go to fault simulation techniques. So, we will see that there are several techniques by which we can do this fault simulation say parallel simulation and deductive simulation concurrent simulation. So, there are several techniques by which we can do this over and above the very simple uh, serial simulation. 
Now, for helping in the testing process, so there are certain techniques that have been incorporated into the design, they are known as design for testability. So, design for testability means, so if the if a, if a circuit is designed by the designer and the test engineer is asked to do the testing, so it may so happen that uh, the it is dif very difficult to probe certain points inside the circuit because this is an IC chip, so I cannot, uh, I do not have access to the internal points of the chip, so I have to do it through the primary input output lines only. So, it may be difficult to access uh, those points uh, from the primary inputs and outputs. So, if it is uh, difficult to access, so it may be difficult to test the faults that uh, might have occurred at those points. So, what this design for testability tells is that we incorporate something extra into our design so that this testing process is uh, helped. Okay. So, it improves controllability, controllability in the sense that I can uh, put a any, any desired point in the circuit to a desired uh, logic, logic value. So, that way it is controllability. Similarly, observability means I have got, uh, I can observe the value of some point in the circuit uh, by some technique at the primary output. So, what I essentially mean is that if this is the full circuit that I have, full design that I have. Now, so it may be that I want, so the, here I have got the primary inputs to the system, here I have got the primary outputs. Now, if I want to check the status of this particular line, so whether this line is uh, say stuck at 0 or not. So, if I want to test this one, then somehow I have to uh, apply some pattern so that this line becomes in, in a fault free circuit this line becomes 1. Okay. So, that has to be done. So, somehow I have to apply the test patterns so for uh, apply the patterns here so that it becomes 1. Similarly, if uh, due to this due to this so this effect of this uh, fault it should get propagated to some output so that I can see that uh, this a fault has occurred. So, this is, uh, so one thing is that to control this point to uh, a desired value and the second thing is to observe the value at some primary output. Now, if the circuit is quite complex, it may not be very simple to uh, have it uh, to do these things. So, what is done? We have to have some additional uh, hardware incorporated into the system, so that this uh, checking becomes easy. Now, so this DFT, so this is generally incorporated into the design and the goal is to improve controllability and or observability of internal nodes of the chip or it may be for PCB also. The PCB also we have got a number of chips mounted on the PCB. So, uh, that uh, individual chips uh, inputs and outputs may not be traceable. So, we have to uh, have uh, we have to have a look at that from the system input output point of view. So, that way we can have to we may need to have a uh, PCB also uh, some uh, feature has to be incorporated so that it becomes testable. So, there are uh, three main approaches for this uh, design for testability insurance. One is the, the ad hoc techniques. So, second class is a scan design or boundary scan and the third one is built in self test. So, we will look into each of them in, in a nutshell. So, ad hoc technique it means that we add additional internal point, so we, we, uh, test point, so by multiplexels. So, maybe that um, uh, this point we need, need to control. Okay. So, this point we need to control. So, what we do? We put a multiplexer before that and there is a controllability, uh, this multiplexer uh, control input is there. So, if this control input is 0, then this normal system data will pass through this so that the circuit will operate at its uh, normal way. And if we want to uh, see, the, if we want to uh, put some particular value at this at this point, so we have got some test data inputs and test data input will be set, uh, will be passed through this multiplexer at this point. So, this way we can control the value that we have at this point. So, that is known as, uh, so controllability is enhanced by this means. On the other hand, uh, the observability. So, if we want to improve the observability, so what happens is that, so this point we want to observe. So, we add an another multiplexer and we put it, uh, the, so this is the normal system output can go to primary output. So, we, we pass it through a multiplexer. So, if this point is selected, then 
for normal operation of the system though this normal data normal system data will go to primary output whereas when we are trying to observe the value of some point internal point so we put it like this so what we essentially do is that if this is a big circuit that we have and we want to say uh, say there is one and gate and this output is going to some or gate etc and we want to control the value at this point we want to control the value at this point so this circuit will be modified like this so this and gate is there so it will be passing through a multiplexer and this multiplexer's output will go to the or gate okay so this is the, this line is equivalent to this line and there will be another line so this is that circuit boundary there will be another line which will be taking out so which we call the test input so this is our test input and this multiplexer has to be controlled so in the this multiplexer has to be controlled that is controlled by that test mode so this is selecting the test mode selecting the test mode so if this is if the test mode selects this test input then the test input can be uh, put into this uh, um, uh, put at this point otherwise for normal operation it will go similarly if we want to observe the value at that we have in this point so it may be difficult because it may be feeding some other gates etc so it is difficult to uh, see the um, output so what we do is that we select one uh, primary output we select one primary output onto which we want to visualize uh, this point or see this point. So, if this primary output uh, is uh, say finally coming from some gate, so it is coming from say this gate, it is connected to this primary output. So, what we do? We modify it so that there is another multiplexer again. So, the connection established is like this, and this is that test mode. So, in test mode this uh, line uh, in test mode, so this line value will be available at this primary output. So, that way observability of this point is increased and similarly controllability of this point is increased by putting this extra uh, components into the system. So, uh, that way we can have this uh, add we can add internal test points for controllability and observability enhancement. Of course, uh, it is quite ad hoc because wherever we feel that it is difficult to observe a line or control a line, we are putting this type of multiplexers. Okay. So, uh, primarily we target hard to test portions of the chip, the part of the chip for, for which we find that it is very difficult to uh, put the put a particular signal line to some desired value. So, there we do this thing and similarly for uh, the output also where it is very difficult to observe. So, there we actually uh, put this one. So, this is um, uh, this will be added on case to case basis and whatever we do from one circuit may not be true for the other circuit. So, it has to be it, will, it has to vary from circuit to circuit and uh, it is hard to test regions of the chip that is targeted like in this fashion. Other uh, way out is to have this scan design. So, this is uh, the typical uh, system that we have. So, any system will have uh, this combinational logic and some flip flops in it. So, uh, we transform these flip flops so that they uh, they form a shift register. Okay. The basic difficulty that we have is that uh, if I have a combinational logic, so it has got some primary inputs, it has got some primary inputs and there are some flip flops which are the next state flip flops. Now, you see that these uh, being primary input and primary output. So, these lines they can be controlled very easily and also observed very easily, but it is difficult to uh, control say values that I that I need to put at this point, because starting with the initial state of the finite state machine. So, these uh, flip flops they uh, they will have some value depending upon the state transitions that are affected into the system. So, as a result it is difficult to come up with uh, uh, proper the state transition, so that we have the desired uh, values at these flip flops. So, this scan design is a transformation 
that will help us in doing these operations. What we do is that say uh, this is the original flip flop that I have. So, this uh, uh, d i is the d input, q i is the q output and clock. So, it is transformed into something like this where we put a multiplexer. Okay. So, in this multiplexer we have got this uh, d i coming connected to the 0 line and q i minus 1 that is uh, the, the q output of the previous flip flop in the chain. So, that is connected here and rest of the thing remains unaltered. So, in a uh, in a design what happens is if this flip flops they form a chain. So, what we are doing is that we have got one flip two flip flops say for example, in a design. So, we put some multiplexer here, we put some multiplexer here, here I have got the combinational logic. So, this data input comes here, whereas from this uh, multiplexer from this uh, d flip flop the q output it is put here. So, similarly for this flip flop we have got we have got uh, the uh, input coming from here. So, that is uh, that is that will again go to a multiplexer and this output goes here. So, this way it uh, was, uh, this uh, this uh, output is uh, all these outputs they also simultaneously go to the circuit for normal operation. So, for normal operation these multiplexers are selected in such a fashion. So, that these uh, combinational logic outputs are fed into the multi into the flip flops. So, that they operate in the normal operation normal mode, but in the test mode in the test mode what happens is that this uh, we, we put some pattern here say suppose we put a pattern a value s here. So, this value s will be coming into the d flip flop and in the next cycle. So, the, the so the, in the next clock so that s value will go to the, the other the, the next flip flop and whatever new value we put in this line. So, that will come to this flip flop. So, this way it will form a chain of flip flops. Now, once we have got a chain of flip flops that is forming a some sort of shift register for these uh, patterns uh, for these uh, out of these uh, flip flops that we have in the circuit. So, that that uh, they are converted into a shift register. So, for applying test vectors the primary input part we apply directly for the uh, uh, this uh, state register for the state bits. So, we, we have configured this uh, state re, uh, state flip flops into a shift register. So, we put uh, we, we shift this test vectors into this shift register. Then the circuit is made to operate in the normal mode. So, when it operates in the normal mode. So, this uh, patterns are pattern is applied to the circuit and then the responses are collected again into this flip flops. Now, you see that we uh, so when this circuit is operating when the when this circuit is operating in the test mode. So, what we can do we can take out this uh, point and say that is our scan out point S O and this point is scan in it is S I. So, what we can do we can we can scan in the test vector similarly once the response ha have been on the uh, response has been captured into this flip flops. So, we can scan out the responses through this S O line serially. So, this scan in and scan out operations can be used for uh, putting the test vectors uh, into this uh, uh, flip flops. So, that my test application process becomes simpler and of course, there can be overlaps like when we are shifting out the response of previous uh, vector. So, we can shift in the next test vector. So, so, this is one of the very standard designs like with all the flip flops that we have in the circuit. So, they are converted into a scan into scan flip flops and they are connected over a shift register organization and whatever value we want to ha have in those uh, flip flops we can shift them serially into uh, those into those uh, flip flops and accordingly we can uh, apply the some desired test pattern there. So, the CAD tools that we have. So, they have uh, got uh, facility by which we can uh, transform all the flip flops into this uh, shift register so that can be done and these ATPG tools uh, they are also there which can uh, which take uh, help of this scan based circuits. So, that the test pattern generation becomes simple compared to sequential circuit. So, where we have got flip flops this test pattern generation is a complex problem, but once we have got this scan incorporated into the system 
So, this entire system can be treated as a combinational circuit only. So, that way the combinational ATPGs can be used for generating the test patterns. So, in design for testability, we have uh, got this uh, another important issue is with the PCBs. So, this is basically uh, in PCB what we have is we have got a number of chips mounted. So, they are mounted in some fashion and each of these chips. So, if this is the PCB that we have. So, on this PCB we can have several such chips mounted, several such chips mounted. Now, uh, this has got. So, if we want that these flip flops they should be initialized to some value. Okay. So, they have got their own scan chains inside, they have got their own scan chains inside. Now, how to uh, take help of the, those uh, scan chains and uh, uh, if we want to shift in some serial pattern through this into these scan chains. So, how can it be done? So, this is done by means of this boundary scan structure. So, what happens is that so, one boundary scan cell. So, it is uh, uh, it is um, uh, structured like this. So, this normal input will come uh, from, from, from this uh, on this input line and this scan input will come on this line and this uh, uh, shift this uh, this uh, shift control will control whether this input will go or this scan input will go. So, accordingly this will come to this uh, capture flip flop. So, this when this capture clock comes then the pattern gets uh, the response gets captured onto this. So, it can go to the scan out uh, of this uh, of this cell, so that it can be connected to uh, another uh, scan cell entry. Simi and this uh, also we have got update. So, this update will be updating the uh, output of this uh, cell and then it is going to this uh, boundary scan cell control and that can go to this pad. So, this this is the input output pin. So, from the input output pin we can have this uh, uh, input output cell and that connect to the IC or from it can go to IC or if it is an output. So, we can uh, see the output at this pad. So, th from this pad the value can come to as an input to the IC or it can go we can view uh, observe the output from this point. So, these are these are used for this uh, uh, PCB manufacturing, PCB testing and all that. So, there is an IEEE standard which is called test access port, where we have got this line T say test clock, test mode select line, test data input line and test data output line. So, any chip that follows uh, this particular TAP uh, uh, standard, this IEEE standard. So, they can be connected over a boundary scan architecture. Also, there are built in self test structures. So, where this is where what happens is that the circuit under test we do not apply uh, test patterns from outside. So, in the circuit itself we have got a test pattern generator and a response analyzer integrated. So, from outside it just tells that okay, it should start testing now. So, accordingly this test pattern generator it will go on generating the test patterns they will be applied to the circuit. The responses that we get. So, they will be uh, compressed at this output response analyzer and then this at the file when all the patterns have been applied this output response analyzer. So, it will declare whether this circuit passes the test or fails. So, this is uh, very much useful because from outside I do not have to apply any test vector. So, there is no question of uh, AT uh, from automated test equipment transferring the patterns and all that. So, that way it is very much useful. So, it can be used at device level, PCB level, system level or field operation. It is particularly important for field operation because there I do not have any ATE uh, available. So, there it is uh, the circuit itself is generating its test patterns and uh, comparing responses to detect its help. So, we have seen that many new testing challenges have been uh, uh, have come due to the increasing size and complexity of these VLSI devices feature size the transistor size is decreasing low power VLSI testing. So, the power reduction has is a is, a, is an important factor because uh, it is normally seen that this test power is much higher compared to uh, normal system of normal operation power. We will see why this thing happens later, but this is one fact and with this uh, increasing power consumption the temperature is also increasing significantly. So, that also needs to be considered. So, 
um, uh, initially we will be concentrating on uh, the, this uh, testing techniques uh, atp g faults um, simulation and all these things uh, and towards the end of the course we will look into this advanced topics like uh, low power testing temperature over testing etc thank you